So we are going to talk about KTLS offload and the benefit in offloading crypto tests to the NIST. This presentation is based on a mechanism presented at NetDev 1.2 with TX offload and NetDev 2.2 with RX offload by, by Boris Tisman. The slides I'm going to show today was written by Tari Gilboa, Tarik Tukan, and myself. We are working at NVIDIA in the driver and performance team, and we'll show the advantage in offloading crypto assignments to NVIDIA Mellanox Magnetic 6 dx network interconnect. We will overview the responsibilities of each component, pack driver and hardware, and main offload data flows, and see some performance numbers for both small and large scale. So let's start with the motivation to use KTLS offload and introduction to common TLS. Uh, the motivation for this work mainly came from two perceptions. The first one is that all internet services are becoming more secure. Most of the websites today uses HTTPS connections that mainly rely on TLS protocol and Second perception is that offloading tasks from the host and especially from the CPU is important in order to keep up the increasing pace in the in internet consumption. 100G link, link speed need to use these offloads in order to release as much CPU power to data process. Uh, the solution is based on a pretty much unchanged Linux networking stack with the addition of TLS non-crypto flow. So we get all the goods of a robust and resilient networking stack. Uh, TLS stands for transport layer security. Uh, this protocol has several versions, and in this presentation, we will use uh, TLS version 1.2. TLS is a layer 4 protocol based on top of TCP protocol that was first implemented for user space application and was offloaded to kernel by KTLS module and now to the NIC to encrypt decrypt packets on the fly. We will walk through KTLS device data flows for both the transmit and receive sites and present performance results in a patch synthetic environment and Nginx. Nginx real life server application. KTLS offload time. First implementation which offloads crypto processing from application layer to the kernel was introduced in kernel version 4.13 as a software offload. NVIDIA Mellanox Connectix 6 dx KTLS TX offload support was introduced by MLX5 e driver in kernel ver version 5.6. And the RX stability was added in kernel version 5.9. In between, we had an FPGA programmable <laughs> implemented also by MLX driver with supported offload in kernel for it. As this presentation is a part of TLS workshop, I believe that most of you are well known with the TLS protocol pros and cons. Ideally, we would process packet independent. It works like that in most common security protocols, for example, IPsec and DTLS. Unlike those protocols, TLS process records, and those records can be spread on a multiple TCP packet. At the right chart, we can see an example for three TLS records, leads to four TCP max segment size packets. We can see that all records share their data with another record, the same TCP uh, For example, a packet number two, a TCP packet number two is shared between TLS record number one and TLS record number two. We used AES counter mode, which generates ciphertext by XOR operation between the keystream and the data for encryption. Keystream can be generated using an in initialization vector and key, and key, which can be found in the TLS crypto context. Driver is responsible for initializing hardware with the proper context provided by KTLS stack on creation. 
In addition, hardware must track the TLS context in order to successfully encrypt the crypt packet. Some flows can cause hardware to lose its state. In this case, hardware will indicate it to the driver that will coordinate with the TLS module to restore it. This scheme shows the rules of each layer. User space data is kept in memory. TLS protocol is responsible for data segmentation, encrypt, decrypt, and authenticate, as well as adding headers and trailers and to divide into records. Then it will hand it to the uh, TCP that splits the record into max segment size. We will start with the transmit flow. I will go through the condition checked in case of a good fast path. First, the driver will check each packet, whether it belongs to an offloaded socket. Let's say it's true. Now it will check the packet TCP sequence number and compare it to the expected TCP sequence number. If it's also true, it will prepare a proper TXT descriptor and forward the packet for authentication and encryption on the fly by the NIC and to the wire. Let's say once again that the packet is an offload packet, but it the driver discovers that TCP sequence number is not the expected TCP. Now, driver will trigger this inflow. First, the driver will understand to which record this packet belongs to, followed by updating hardware with the suitable crypto content using fast pass communication with fencing to guarantee that we supply hardware with the proper TX. Notice that KTLS module is not invo involved in this procedure. Now the packet can be passed for encryption once again by the NIC. We will move to the receive side path. When hardware is in offload state, all packets belong to a connection passing through the crypto engine are decrypted and authenticated. Hardware will indicate it to the driver using ARG crypto and the driver will mark it to inform software TLS using SKB decrypted field. Now for the receive side traffic, TLS module will check each record independently. It will check if all packets inside the TLS record are decrypted. In this case, it's true, so we can copy the decrypted data to memory. In case of out of orders or drops, we will defer the data pass to two scenarios. First one is partially decrypted TLS packet. Not all packet inside the record is decrypted, but some of them actually does. In the stream below, we can see that packet number three is ciphertext, while packet two and four are plain text. Means that TLS record number two is mixed with both, with both cipher and plain text. Packet three contains payload and TCP headers without any TLS record header. So in this case, software will prove the job, we get packet number three, after that we can copy all data. We should note that it will not impact the following packet, hardware can copy the different packets four, five, and seven. Four, five, six, and seven. The other case will require hardware resynchronization. Hardware must track crypto context for each connection and out of order or drops can cause hardware to get out of sync. And when it does, hardware will stop decrypting packets for this process. In this case, it will send the resync request using its RX descriptors to the driver that notifies TLS stack using the new async resync API. Following it, the driver query the device for a guest TCP sequence number and provide it to the stack. KTLS stack will check if it, if it matches any of its tracked incoming packets and call the driver which resync hardware. Meanwhile, software will finish the job and decrypt all encrypted packets. 
uh, after a successful resync, the device will return to a flow state and decrypt the received file. Uh, the chart uh, broken line symbolizes that resync flow is approved by software and the hardware can decrypt. So to show the performance impact of KTLS hardware offload with Nginx server, we use two AMD EPIC systems connected to a switch with connecting 6BX NIC to the WRK client. WRK opens different amount of connection, connections, range between 1,024 and 32K connections with 64 threads and continuously requesting one megabyte file from the server. Nginx responds with either plain text HTTP response, HTTP with software KTLS, which uses OpenSSL TLS uh, version 1.2 implementation, and HTTPS with KTLS hardware TX offload. In this case, we modified Nginx to use send file chain, also for TLS traffic, and the default is only for HTTP. All implementations reach line rates from 1,024 1, and up to 30K connections. And the graph shows around 85 gigabit per second at the WR, as the WRK reporting it in application layer two, which is not uh, taken into consideration layer three and four header. Basically, it's a pure HTTP object data means the bandwidth in which we can transfer HTTP objects. This slide shows the CPU improvement, followed by offloading crypto crunching device. We calculated active cost by summing the amount of CPU used by the server in order to transmit 100 gigabit per line. We calculated improvement with the delta between HTTPS using software and hardware offload divided by the amount used by software. In, for example, in this server we used 64 cores, and let's assume that all cores are working in 50% utilization. 64 cores multiplied in 0 0.5 equals to 32 active cores. We saw a pretty much significant improvement of up to 50% reduction in CPU use. If we look at the table at 32K connection, HTTP response activates a bit more than 12 cores in order to maintain line rate. Software KTLS uses 19 active cores, which is around seven more than HTTP. When KTLS hardware TX offload uses 14 active cores, only two more than HTTP. And we should notice that for 1,024 to 8K cases, so we can see that HTTP using KTLS TX offload is using less active cores than HTTP. This is caused by a higher packet rate when transmi transmitting plain text that leads to a higher CPU utilization. I will clarify. Uh, on the wire, we have less headers for the same MTU, and HTTP connection can process more data. This slide shows throughput speed up when using full unidirectional off. Uh, we use two Intel servers connected back to back with connected 6 NIC. We patched Hyper to support TLS handshake using OpenSSL libraries and compare between software KTLS <laughs> and the receive method, KTLS device offload and TCP traffic using stack send and receive method. Full unit directional offloads mean we use TX offload in server side and RX offload on the client. We measure up to 2.5X speed up like we can see in uh, the single stream bar, uh, we can see 18 gigabit 
throughput comparing to the seven gigabit achieved by software. KTLS offload breached line rate with less connection, uh, with less connections, as we can see in the eight stream case. And once again, the graph reports application layer throughput or good put reported by Hyper, something like 94.5 gigabit. In the following two slides, we want to show how KTLS device offload can save a lot of CPU power for both sender and receiver. We took cases that achieve 100 G line rate and compare the amount of active cores for each case. Again, active cores is the amount of CPU used in order to get 100 G. So if we look at the sender graph, we can see that in order to, act, to achieve line rate, with 64, 128, and 512 connection. We use the same amount of active calls for KTLS device and for plain text TCP traffic. Means we recover all of the CPU overhead caused when using TLS protocol. Uh, when I say we recover all, I should use quotation marks and the small difference in CPU utilization when using TCP traffic caused by packet rate differences. TCP packet rate was higher in comparison to the two KTLS implementation presented, like in the case we saw earlier. Now for the received side. So if we look at the left column, we can see that in order to get 100 G line rate over TCP traffic with 64 connections on the received side, we used eight active calls from the uh, 24 available in the system. A bit more than 10 from KTLS device offload and almost 18 with software KTLS implementation. If we look at the right column in the graph, we can see that using software KTLS over 512 connections uses 19 cores, which is nine more active cores than TCP. TLS offload uses 13 cores, three more, three more than TCP for this calculation. And let's use TCP as a lower bound. We can look at the delta between software and TCP as the TLS overhead. So we recover 66% 66, 66 of the CPU overhead, mainly crypto overhead caused by software implementation. Uh, in the receive side, we do not see a better CPU utilization for KTLS device like we saw in the TX side. In this case, the overhead is too high to recover but we saw a bit higher packet rate also here. So we, uh, we walk through the benefits of using a TLS device API. So adding crypto state to the NIC and the ability to encrypt the crypt packets on the fly leaves us with single PCI round trip, which helped to save PCI e a bandwidth and added no additional latency in comparison to Uh, data designated for encryption is not written to RAM. The TLS tags add non-crypto uh, flow to deal with KTLS device offload. Other than that, it remains unchanged. Uh, so we profit the resilience TCP stack with memory management, congestion control, and other important components that comes with it. And the last point is that the driver call the TLS tax whenever hardware needs to be resynced. So uh, to summarize it, we saw a significant performance throughput speed up gain by offloading crypto processing uh, to the network device. KTLS device offload recovers a massive amount of CPU overhead caused by TLS protocol. It can help prevent hackers from getting the data before it 
uh, it is encrypted since no crypted data is written to RAM. And, and we end, uh, ends up with an easy to maintain, hard, high performing TLS implementation relying on the great Linux network stack. That's it. Thanks for listening. Okay, uh, thank you. So we do have um, a few questions on the chat that I'd like to get to. However, we're also at the official end of the session. So unless there's um, object objections, I propose that we uh, extend this a few minutes so we can cover uh, some of these questions. So the first question, and then I think there were several in this vein, um, reorder TCP packets. So what exactly happens when they get reordered? What is the impact? What happens if uh, we have a flow that's consistently getting reordered packets? I'm not sure I, I understand the whole question. And I also, we have Boris here to help me as the architect of this uh, feature. So in case of reordering, uh, um, we can trigger software offload to take control and uh, like finish the job for the offload, for the hardware offload. Uh, but in a pretty much uh, reordering consistent environment, KTLS will will uh, trigger resync again and again, so it will be harmful. Okay, uh, which real world website has HTTP transfers with one megabyte sizes? So this is a good question. We, we took this um, file sizes as we tried several uh, file sizes, so we started with the 64K uh, files uh, up to checking, uh, try to check like streaming scenarios in, in which um, uh, companies that can support videos and streaming uh, services to, uh, to, to the world. So th they use big files, but uh, I don't know for a real website that using one megabyte files, but pretty much large files. I know about several customers of our company. Uh, so it can be large files, but specifically one megabyte. I can't find an example for it. Uh, okay, so I, th I think the point there is for something like video, where we're serving uh, massive amounts of data, it's that's a clear use case for something like KTLS where we're optimizing for the amount of data as opposed to uh, small packets. Okay, uh, next question. Mm -hmm. KTLS works in process context. So TLS record and TCP segments are formed in different workflows. Wouldn't it simplify to manage TLS records on TX path if KTLS formed a TLS record on SK write transmit? So I think the, the question there is if we maybe deferred the, the TLS record into the kernel, uh, then we can construct TLS records of optimal sizes. That seems to be the question. And then would that improve the performance for TLS over TCP? I'm not sure I, I understand the question, but if if I do, sounds like, sounds like a pretty much something to check. Excuse me, can, can I ask uh, by voice? Hello? Yes. Yes, you can ask by voice. Yes, yeah. go ahead. Um, the question is that um, we we can, um, in um, SK write Smith. Uh, the function calling in uh, TCP IP stack, we know exactly uh, the state of TCP, uh, exactly how much 
data uh, TCP uh, can send to the peer. In this place, we can form a TLS record of optimal size. So we can uh, split the TLS record uh, uh, very accurately according to TCP segments. That's the problem which you uh, initially mentioned at the beginning of the presentation when TLS record doesn't match uh, TCP segments exactly. So uh, I'm wondering uh, whether uh, different design when uh, KTLS works inside the software queue context, uh, wouldn't such design simplify uh, offloading on the network uh, interface by the NIC? Does that make sense? Yeah, also to me. So it might be interesting to see the uh, prototype code of that. Uh, we I have agree. a prototype. Our code works exactly this way. It's not in upstream, but uh, TMPS works exactly this uh, way. So I would suggest to post it upstream. I think there's um, there needs to be discussion. One of the one of the concerns I would have is that we're inserting uh, data into the TCP stream as opposed to to modifying that. I'm sure that would have some some ramifications. Uh, obviously, with TLS, we're already being or KTLS, we're already being invasive on the transmit side. So, um, would that raise questions of how do we synchronize if, for instance, we we wanted to move the TLS back into the host and, and things like that. So let's go to a next question. If the channel is lossy, then KTLS offload might go for resync often. I think that's a similar question to the reordering. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I think the, so that's about it. Uh, so, uh, I think all, uh, thank you for everyone. I think these are three really good talks. Uh, super excited to see TLS performance getting such visibility, um, TLS in general. Okay, with that, uh, let's adjourn and I'll see you in the next uh, set of workshops. Thank you very much. Thank you.